Hi, welcome to 78 Amplified, we're Max and Sam. Today on the episode, Mr. Lupo the Boy, or as you know him, the Boy Lupo. <laughs> Uh, this nineteen forties radio uh, persona that you've put on, Sam. It's um, it's you like it, don't you? Likes a strong word. It's there. It's a voice only a mother could love. I I think in this interview, I've I get the biggest compliment I've ever received in my music journalism career. Comparison to Nardwa. What? Yeah, that was pretty big. We got a lot of ones saying that's a good question. Which I was pretty stoked on, <laughs> considering. Well, no, I'm not stoked. I didn't write the interview. You did, but you know that was perfect. Time to claim credit. What are you doing? Boys. Yeah, I'm not about that. There's no I in team. Look, if uh, if you're a big fan of that em- emotionally resonant, chill wave kind of uh, electronic music, you-, you Fred again style. You're gonna love this interview because mm. it's a, it's packed full of that kind of music, and b, it's packed full of really good questions. As we chat with Lupo the boy. <laughs> I don't know where you were going with that. I was just leaving you to your own devices. But apparently if you give a car no steering wheel, you've got to, you know, manually take it where it needs to go. So it just drives into a creek. Yeah, well, this interview doesn't. This is a it's a good chat if you're into anything electronic, you know. Without any further ado, Sam. I'm excited about this one because Max, you and I saw this man, this boy. Uh, perform at Big Sound, both at La La Land and at the after party. The and there are a couple of the double. There are a couple of characters there that we want to talk about. But first of all, Lupo the boy, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. No worries, Mister the Boy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to throw that in there. It didn't feel yeah. right, <laughs> but. I want to just, I'm going to jump ship here. We have the same question through every episode, but I'm actually going to put one in first because the after party, you played a boiler room set at Fortitude Music Hall for those who don't know, Mm -hmm. but there was a bloke there beaming beyond belief, throwing dance moves, making eye contact with people, trying to be everyone's friends. And I believe he was trying to give you song requests. Potentially. I thought you were going to say it was me. <laughs> it was actually Max. but we... <laughs> I, Yeah, okay, we saw so... him and I was like, this is incredible. This dude, so like, jaw was swinging. Like, it was a saloon. Yeah, right. Okay. And uh, I was like, you got to admire the balls on a man who, <laughs> who comes to a big sound industry after show and is like, hey, man, got some requests. I know you're dropping yeah. some, you've mixed it all perfectly, but I've got some requests. I've got some thoughts. <laughs> Yeah, right. Um, to be honest, I don't really remember. I like I um had it was kind of cool because you were in like a bit of a cage. So there was a bit of separation between you and the, the crowd. So if the requests came through, I, I don't think I um yeah, I don't think I heard him. I did have a guy come up and I had a bunch of stickers on the table. Um, these like live laugh lupo stickers that I have. And um, he just like grabbed a bunch and like gave it to his mates, which is fine because that's what they were there for. But then like walking around the venue afterwards, I just saw them stuck in the weirdest places all around the venue. So like he did free promo, which is pretty pretty nice of him. He can have a he can have a song request or two. <laughs> There's no such thing as bad publicity, so that's a win, I reckon. <laughs> well, I will get to our token question we ask absolutely everyone people are sick of it but it is interesting and that is to get an idea of what you're spinning in your playlist recently yeah that's a that's a really good question i think especially like with djs um you know constantly updating it and um and trying to find like new stuff um oh what have i been doing recently which has been really exciting for me um ba, 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 ba. i've been doing a lot of fun sets lately like a lot of um a lot of like radio sets um promoing like a new song of mine um so it's kind of been like more on the like lo-fi chill side with the release of that song but um there's this guy that i found from i th- want to say he's from norway i think um and 
His name is, it escapes me, Jorgen. That's it, Jorgen. Um, sounds Norsk to me. Sounds Norsk. So Norsk adjacent, Jorgen. And just has this really chill, like, um, kind of like my music adjacent, um, chill, like piano lines. And just it's just really beautiful, really melodic stuff that you can kind of listen to dancing or driving or whatever you want to do. But yeah, Jorgen. Shout out. Jorgen. Shout All out, right. Jorgen. You know what? I'm I'm hopping straight on the Jorgen train. I think after this, I got to check yeah. this out. J O with like a umlet. Um, R G E N. Fuck yeah! One of those real surprised O's. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's a, this is an audio medium, so the the audience did not get the enjoyment I just threw out there. Uh, <laughs> look, uh, we've just come off a pretty mammoth big sound. We, we covered that up top. Where you know you were you were one of our favorite acts, one of the acts that Sam and I were talking about. Thank you. Uh, a lot as well as kind of just you're one of the acts that was just everyone seemed to be saying you've got to get to a looper the boy show <laughs> from an artist perspective how did mm. the week feel to you you know did you did you set out with specific plans goals do you feel like you achieved yeah. anything that you, you would set out to do that's a good question um i think like this is my first big sound but um i've got a lot of like obviously mates in the industry and and my partner's a, an artist as well and and i think this is her third big sound so she's kind of like a toolie um so i had a little <laughs> bit of expectations of of what it would be like um but i think you know nothing can prep you for how hectic like the weeks are when you actually get there um it's just full on like if it's not socializing um it's playing shows if it's not playing shows it's meetings if it's not meetings it's um, you know, just getting amongst the the energy and being a punter. Um, my big sound was a little bit different because um, I actually spent the majority of the time in the studio um, with a couple of really cool artists over the three days in, up in Brizzy. So um, Keto, who ran the after party, um, organized like a, a big song hubs um, kind of writing um writing time with a couple of artists over the three days, which is really exciting. So I spent. Yeah, I spent the three days in the studio making music, which was which was pretty sick. <laughs> did did we get a taste of any of that new stuff in the you know dropped into the mixes at any point? Um, there was a new song of mine in there. Um, I don't think anything we made in the studio, but um, yeah, it was it was a cool couple of days. Yeah, I like like I like a productive big sound. You know yeah, I mean? well, that was it, right? Because like normally, like people are going to meetings and you know talking like business and and um, networking and all that kind of stuff, right? But um, I kind of got away from that, which was pretty cool, and um, yeah, just got to do music, which was sick. Like three days of of music in the studio, followed by you know three nights of playing shows. Um, it was pretty fun. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, we wanted to sort of. We wanted to go right back to the very beginning uh, to yeah. chart your journey to Lupo the Boy um, as sure. a project, and and we, we we were checking out some of your older releases under various different names and projects, and and you can, we we sort of we saw this pattern emerge, just kind of flashes of, of of Lupo the Boy as you went. Firstly, dot to ratio, you know, you're experimenting. <laughs> it was pretty maximalist dance. There were some pretty heavy techno beats. Was that your first foray? Uh, Dude, I feel like I'm like. I feel like I'm in like a Nardwire interview. That's like, a, <laughs> uh, that's so. <laughs> do, 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 um, do, do, do. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the kind of stuff that like my best mates like. I'm gonna bring that up at your wedding, and I'm like, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think I, that was in high school when me and a mate like cracked a version of FL um, Studio and tried to make like Euro trance like Bass Hunter because we just loved all that crazy euro house stuff that was that was kind of like in the in that meme subculture back in the day um but yeah man i haven't heard that name in 20 years <laughs> you can't escape max he knows everything about everyone he's <laughs> he's a research man that's great <laughs> he's not done <laughs> <laughs> well i mean because then as chester darby you know yep. you guys will we, we bring in some absolute heat with dubstep yeah. party mixes, you had a live drummer alongside yourself on the decks. Yeah. What did you kind of take from those party heavy sets that, that, uh, yeah, that right. musically are so different to Lupo that, but that kind of, you know, brought to your live set in the Lupo project? That's a, that's a good question. I think like the party stuff, um, I work, I was an open format DJ for a long time. And when you're an open format DJ, like you can start the night playing, you know, you might be playing rock, right? 
Um, you might be playing like indie stuff and you can finish the night playing dubstep or you can like, you're just going with whatever the crowd brings. And and I think I did that by kind of cutting my teeth quite a lot in my like early career as a musician. And like the Chester Darby stuff was the same. It was me and my mate who um, played in bands and stuff. We were just kind of like inspired by the DJ AM and Travis Barker, um, DJ drama duo, and just kind of tried it out. And, you know, we both really enjoyed partying and we're in a time of our life where we could just get real hype and play music and so we did and i think one of the cool things about um like lupo sets is even though like the music that i make is is pretty like soft and gentle and emotional um you can still work that in to a set to take people on a bit of a journey where they can still party and they can still have fun you can still just enjoy yourself on a club night um it doesn't all have to be like sad soppy and emotional <laughs> It sort of leads into this question because when we did catch you at La La Land, it was a real journey and I sort of came into you um, through Echo and I love that track and, um, you know, we walked in, you were playing that, then all of a sudden you were playing this real heavy, like, I think it was a remix of something, I can't remember off the top of my head, but um, it just caught me completely off guard. So as an artist who releases or whose releases lean more towards that sort of late mm-hmm. night chill set or, you know, late night drive yeah. kind of vibe. What's your approach to, you know, mixing that, but then, you know, balancing it with a bit of energy like you were talking about? Yeah. Um, I think one of the really cool things about being like a laptop musician now um, or an electronic music producer is that you kind of not just stuck in the studio behind your laptop making one kite of beat. Um I think what's really cool about like social media and TikTok and like our generation of music is like, you're not stuck with one genre anymore. Like if you want to be a lo-fi artist and then make hip hop beats, or you want to be like a house artist that then plays garage or like, you're not, you're not, we're not like kind of like gender gate, um, genre gatekeeping anymore. Um, And I think that's really cool. And like, if you go into a set going, I don't know what the fuck I'm going to play. I was going to do anything that feels good. Um, then you're free to do whatever. And then you can hopefully catch people by surprise. And I think like if they're the pieces of your set that are really memorable, then you've done something right. It definitely was. We brought a few good mates of ours who play in like a deathcore metal bit, like metal band. And they just played a showcase and they came <laughs> upstairs to your set. I don't think they'd ever seen a EDM set live or electronic set and <laughs> every drop they just turn to us and go oh fuck yeah this is sick <laughs> they're actually that's my target audience <laughs> yeah. <Like> metal heads <laughs> all my facebook ads are just yeah yeah just dudes pitting up the front <laughs> yeah dude follows pathway <laughs> drive <off>. iron maiden <laughs> yeah. Yeah. um i do have a, a bone to pick though because yeah i was i was a bit blue balled I've got okay. to be real. And I was telling Max, um, you mixed in Technologic by Daft Punk. Unbelievable. Great yeah. drop. And it was building and building. I was like, all right, I'm going to cut some more shapes in an Arnott's factory here. I'm ready to go. It was building, you know, the uh, the Coke Zeros were getting pretty tasty. And then all of a sudden, hard mix into another track. Yeah, right. I mean... I'm not angry. That, that's at the um, that's at the after party. It was, and you know, I'm not angry. I was networking, but um, <laughs> just just for next time, uh, <laughs> I'll remember just, this. Just a small yeah. note, yeah. And then notes. even <laughs> even on the mic, just go. This one goes out to Mister Seventy Eight. <laughs> yeah, Mister Senor Seventy Eight. Senor, I'll take Senor. I like that a yeah. lot. <laughs> that's good feedback. That's good to know. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just saying. It was <laughs> good market both, research. Both drops were good, um, <laughs> but I went to throw down, and I, it was. I looked like a bit of a dick. <laughs> you should look on his face. It was pure. I betrayal. saw you about to do it, and that's why I changed. <laughs> no, I like it. I you made everyone else toes. suffer for my enjoyment. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you were in control. You had the, all the power there. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, part of part of the tracks that you release, they're so emotionally like resonant and they feel like they mm. have these big, you know, moments of catharsis when, when you hit those drops, when you hit those climactic points, how often, uh, you know, at, at your live sets, how often are the punches up front, jaws swinging, 
uh, and they're just, they're just tears coming down the face. Like how, how often are people having those like, you know, moments of realization in their life? Yeah, it's, um, it's been pretty fun. Like there's been a couple of shows. I think when you're like a new artist and you, um, and you start getting the confidence to like play your own music at shows, like you find a lot of DJs who produce, um, you get to their show and they're not really playing any of their own music. And I think there's like a level of confidence that you have to build to get people to enjoy it. Um, but there's definitely been like moments that have been pretty surreal of, you know, having, having people you've never met, like even in my hometown, like even in Newcastle playing shows that I've people I've never met um, in Newcastle is a, a pretty small community um, who are like singing every word to every song or just like upfront and mouthing the lyrics to everything. And like, there's those pretty surreal moments. And, and I hope that because the music is a bit more emotionally charged that people are feeling a little something. From a live performance perspective, you said before that you were a, a quote unquote a laptop musician now. When it comes to a live performance, how do you go about breaking that barrier? Because sometimes you see DJs and they've got a laptop or in some cases multiple laptops and it feels like there's a, there's a bit a of a barrier between them. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good question. I um I think the difference I'm a, like I'm a musician, so I, I'm a trained musician um and have played uh, I'm mostly a drummer, but I've played other instruments most of my life. And I think that there's that thing of like playing a live show where it is a bit of a performance piece and you are concentrating and you are doing what you've planned and what you've prepped. And it is a bit more regimented when you're in that live set. I find with DJing, the easiest way to describe the difference is like you're enjoying it with the punters. Yeah. So with a live set, you're right. It can sometimes feel like there's a bit of a wall in between because, you know, you can have heaps of fun and you can drink heaps of beers on stage or do whatever you want to do. But at the same time, you've got to put on a good show. Um, and you need to make sure you're concentrating and, and doing your thing. Um, and I find myself with with my live shows that I've got it set up in a way where I'm playing to my strengths. There's a lot of finger drumming going on, a um, bit of like playing piano and and everything's kind of set up so I can pretty much have as much fun as I'd like. Because <laughs> uh, I feel like if I have fun, then people in the crowd are going to have fun too. <laughs> yeah. At least that's my excuse. <laughs> Well, Max touched on the many projects um, in the journey so far, but do you feel like Lupo the Boy is, you know, your long-term home, you know, to release music going forward? Yeah, definitely. Um, definitely. I um, I kind of started the project um, during COVID because I took a break from doing like session music and all that other stuff. And I was like, oh, I've actually got time to focus on my own stuff now. So yeah. Um, I had a, just a laptop full of random beats and songs and kind of tidied them up and um, started releasing them. And then I guess the Lupo project gained traction and it's what, yeah, that's a really nice way to put it actually. It's what feels like home um, and plan to like continue, continue doing it. And I think the really cool thing is like, even though the music is has traditionally been like emotionally charged, a lot of the stuff that I've got coming up is definitely a lot more like club friendly. Um, definitely relates more to the stuff that you would see if at, uh, um, I played at a DJ set that you came to. That was the beauty of that set. It was there was these parts where yeah we were just ready to throw down and probably start a pit to be honest. Yeah, and then <laughs> then get the right people you'd, there. You'd pull yeah, us back did. a little bit and we'd just sort of be back to mellow. It was such a beautiful like. Thank you. Uh, yeah, it was, very, very it was hard to do in half an hour. Like, um, yeah, it's hard. To, I think there's a lot like a lot of uh, more tenured DJs will will say like it's hard that now festivals a lot of the festivals are one hour sets. Um, it's really hard to take people on that journey for like one hour. Um, doing that in half an hour <laughs> is, <laughs> is quite tough. So I'm happy to hear that. We we a, a, a long time ago we were chatting with I can't remember who it was. What a, a, a DJ <laughs> and they were talking about how um, you know it, it's really that that case of you set the rules for someone um and then you like you said you spend the first you know period of the set setting the rules and then you spend the rest of the time breaking the rules yeah. do you, like is when it comes to setting those rules how long do you feel like proportional to the length, length of your set do you feel like you need to really set the rules for what a lupo show should be for an audience that might never have seen you that's a that's yeah that's a that's a cool way to put it um i think that like i depending on the, the time of the night, right. And the time in, in, in which your audience is coming in, like that set in particular, um, I was opening. So I had the really cool opportunity of like building people and like welcoming them to that environment when they, when they come in. Um, so I reckon the first, like maybe 20%, yeah, 20% of your set is where you kind of just like 
welcoming them into what you want to do and then start, you know, dropping something that's a little bit off. I kind of go with like the three for them, one for me rule, <laughs> which is like, <laughs> you know, three things for them that I think is going to build and the one thing that I'm just being selfish with and I, and I want. <laughs> Look, you always got to have a little bit of something for you. Otherwise, yeah. that's the point. <laughs> yeah, because that's, that's what the taste making is about, right? Like you get a little bit of your enjoyment because – you know, there's things that are hits and you know they're hits and you think that there's things that are trending that you know they're trending and people want to hear and you can have your own iterations of what they sound like, but unless you're putting like your own little flavor on it, then there's kind of no point coming. <laughs> and there's always one person in the room that goes, that's also for me because that's fucking sick. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> uh, bit of a bit of a gear change uh, for a second. You recently dropped a, a remix of your fellow Novocastrian Rave Tapes track, uh, K-High. When you were working with those guys to to to, to pick a track to, to remix, did you have free range to pick from the album? Because I know there's so many different sounds and and, mm. and moments in that album, and and kind of if you did have choice, what was what made K High the perfect candidate? What were you looking for? Um, that was K High. I think was one of the lead singles of their um, new album, and um, years ago, Rave Tapes released a song called K Buyer. Um, so it's kind of like a closure and throwback to that old single and, and takes it in the new direction. They've used a lot of the sounds that they used on that old song, um, brought them into the new one, but but definitely more of that like hyper pop feel that, that they've been moving with. Um, so it to be honest, like it was it was their preference and my preference. So it lined up pretty well that that we both wanted to do the same thing. Um, I got a, I got a nice sneak peek of the album a few months before it came out too. So it was good to, um, it was good to be on the same page and it's such a good song. So it was so hard to like take it in my own direction and, and, you know, make it my own because it was already an absolute banger. So yeah, I had a lot of fun doing it though. Before we let you go, you said that you spent three days at Big Sound collaboratively writing yep. and it's been a little while since we've had some new music since Perfect Plate Drop. So Without getting yourself in trouble, what can you tell us about hopefully some new music soon? Yeah, definitely. I do have a new single coming out in the start of November, um, which will be my most club-friendly original song to date, which is really cool. Um, I'm really excited for that one. I actually sent it off to um, the pre-masters today. Um, so. Hey. So I should have the uh, masters back um, by next week for that all to be uh, submitted and going ahead. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited for that one. It's with um, collaborating with another Newcastle artist, um, kind of worked together and we've wanted to do something for a little while and um, they're starting up a new project. And so we're going to launch that project um, with this single. Um, and then after that, going to probably consistently release a few things over the summer. I've been sitting on quite a lot with like with perfect played and, and the song before that, nobody will love you. Um, that kind of me to me was at like the closing of a chapter of the, a lot of that melodic um, emotionally charged stuff. And a lot of the things that I've been working on are a lot more club friendly, a lot more fitting to my DJ sets and live performances. So um, I'm really excited to get those out over the summer. Oh, exciting. And we can only assume it's Dave Gleason from the screaming jets. That's a uh, new feature. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's his, it's his new emotional dance house side project. Yeah, he's been he's been hanging on to it for a while. Uh, you know, Brian Triple M yeah. Nights just wasn't doing it for him. He's he's yeah. he's, he's making the move. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Lupo the Boys' latest single, Perfect Plate, is out now. So listen in wherever you get your music. It sounds like be ready to have your dance pants on in November, though, when some new music might be dropping. Catch them live at the West Best Blockfest in Newcastle on October six. Lupo the Boy. Thank you so much for ta- having a chat to us today and uh, telling us about uh, an absolutely storied and journeyed career. Thank you so much, 78s. <laughs> <laughs>